Um, welcome back to my channel. Um, today I want to talk about the best Shopify niches in 2019. Um, this is especially for those who are beginners and who want to start off and uh, who are kind of confused as to what kind of niche they want to get into or you know what kind of store they want to get into. So let's get right into it. So anyway, I forgot to mention, before we start, uh, make sure you subscribe if you like more videos and um, you enjoy my videos and like my content and, um, and join the family. So the first one here we have is pets. And um, many people or couples choose not to have kids actually and they treat their pets like their kids. So that means they, they spend a lot of money and time on their pets and they do a lot of research for them to make them happy. So many of these people actually, they love their pets a lot and they can spend potentially a lot of money if they think that the pets will like the item. So especially if they are unique, they're um, you know, functional in some way and they, um, you know, they would help benefit the pets in some way or another or make their life more easier. Um, it's actually a big market to get into so you have a lot of potential to scale and um, target a lot of different people and different angles and um, you're not really confined to your targeting and um, who to show your ads to. So, you know, that's always a lot of room for potential. But um, of course, the caveat is a lot of people nowadays are in the pet niche. So you have to make sure that your branding is in place and you have a unique marketing angle and product. Um, and make sure in, in the long run, you want to, you know, private label your products and things like that to, you know, really separate yourself from the, the masses. So other than that, there's also lots of room for influencer marketing on IG, on Instagram. Um, you know, there are really big niches out there for pets, especially for dogs and, you know, for cats and all the other animals. Um, and, you know, having that presence on Instagram is just, is just another good way for you to diversify your traffic and um, not just focus on, you know, mainly Facebook ads, which is what most people do. So that's always a good thing to have. Um, and there's just a lot of room for potential that way. So definitely one to consider. So the second one here that I put is baby. So in the baby niche, a lot of parents spend a lot of money on their kids, um, you know, similar to that of pets. And usually for at this stage of their life, these parents would have to have like some kind of job by now um, that have some kind of stable salary. And um, here I wrote that there are lots of disposable income for these people. And um, this is true to some extent because, you know, they already assume, presumably been working for, you know, at least a couple of years now, maybe in their late 20s or early 30s, they have some money. And, you know, having a kid, they have the expectation, you know, they're coming in to expect that they're going to spend a lot of money on their kids, you know, whether it's um, for the food, for the clothes, um, for the accessories, for the items, the toys, stuff like that. So, you know, they already have the income. Um, in place so as long as you provide them with you know a product that is not only unique but something that they want and want to have um, that will benefit their baby and themselves then um, it is a good opportunity um, so they spend a lot of expensive spend a lot on the kids and you know babies actually they go through a lot of different stages really quickly in their in their um, you know in the first few years of their life so they're going to be constantly spending money and you know having that buying mentality so it's definitely going to be really beneficial for them, you know, since they're already in that kind of mindset that they're going to be spending. So as long as you have the right products. Um, so another benefit here is that quality is not too big of an issue as long as it works. So as long as it looks functional, um, as long as it looks cute for the baby, and um, as long as, you know, it doesn't break on them and it arrives, they're usually not too... Um, disappointed or not to um, care. They don't really care too much about um, how good the quality is as long as you know it works and things like that. So usually there'll be less returns in this aspect as well, which is always good in the long run. So the third one here I have is health slash beauty slash vanity. So this is relating to things like, um, things like um, cream, um, you know, face masks, uh, you know, perfume, stuff like that. Anything that would benefit them in some way or to make them improve someone's life in some aspect. So these are vanity products. Um, usually in this niche, there's mass appeal. Um, this is for mostly most genders, for both genders, which is always a good thing when you're looking to target um, different people. 
um, and it's also a woman dominant niche um, where this is a good thing because most online shoppers are actually women if you haven't already noticed so there's going to be a lot of room for scaling and a lot of room for um, you know uh, having customers to purchase from your website and you know while it is a competitive niche there is a lot of branding potential um, it's going to be a way to separate yourself from the masses selling the same product and um, you know you can even make a one product store or a few products and really solidify that brand um, in order to you know grow and then you know demand a higher price for that there's also huge collaboration opportunities um, especially Instagram um, since this product is actually uh, uh, you know targeted for both genders you can actually send your products to different influencers in um, you know, different niches who are maybe into you know well-being um, you know maybe in fashion and stuff like that um, basically you can send them free products and you can ask them to send you videos you know, in return you know for testimonials and stuff you know I've seen a lot of um, youtubers and other other um, business owners like that who kind of do this as one of their strategies and um, it really works out well in the long run to create that strong brand feel um, but you know make sure that they um, you know these products that you're selling they're not really damaging anyone's skin and you know and or well-being um, or else you know you're going to really get into some huge problems if you know some people mention that you know it's either not working or it's damaging your skin and you know that's not what you want so make sure that the product works of course there's also a huge potential for um, you know for a recurring model in this niche you know because especially when you're using a product and it runs out uh, people usually have to buy the product and again and again to kind of uh, maintain their um, you know the condition of their skin or whatever to make that you know that feeling um, recurring so once in a while you do have that opportunity to um, have those same customers come back so it's really going to help your customer retention rate and um, things like that so that's always a good thing to have in this niche so the last but not least we have fashion um, so for this for this niche it's um, you could do most men you could do both men and women's fashion but I feel that women's fashion would be a lot easier because as, as I mentioned before um, you know women do like to shop more online so right here we have um, huge branding potential huge branding potential um, it's what's going to separate you from the other stores out there you know selling the same items but um, you're also going to have huge collaboration opportunities where you collaborate with different influencers in that niche um, it doesn't even have to be that big maybe like anywhere from 10 to 50k followers to begin with you know you can send them the products and then you know you can get more photos custom photos for your brand so that's really going to help with your um, long-term branding and strategy um, ultimately what you want to have is to have um, custom content that's unique to your brand and um, you know make sure you don't have any copyrighted photos because um, you know uh, that's what's going to lead you to big consequences and copyright intellectual property issues stuff like that so that's not what you want so you know women have a passion in fashion and typically have a better desire you know a more more of a desire to look good as opposed to men but even though you know both genders do like to do that um, they also spend big money on shopping actually daily you know there's a reason why there's so many brands out there in the, in the fashion niche um, trying to make products trying to you know but um, every you realize that every brand has their own strategy and every you know their own way of styling and, and their different vibes and their Instagram and social media profiles so that's what you really want to have um, in the long term and um, once you have everything in place your average order value can be actually be really high um, you know it can be up to like three hundred dollars your maximum average order value um, you know all the way to like 500 or maybe you know you can also price um, your products a lot higher too and you know but the caveat here is the quality of the items really needs to be in place um, the last thing you would want to do is to have a product that you know the, the quality just sucks and you know you're going to have a lot of returns and you know that's not what you want because it's really going to hurt your um, branding image so assuming that you have that in place you're also going to allow it's also going to allow for good and healthy margins so you can really have you know a lot of room to breathe to scale and grow your business and um, you know more room to test different products as well um, you know I have an item right now that sends for about ten dollars you can actually you know price it up to anywhere up to like fifty dollars and you know get a um, forty dollars profit margin for each or even more to be honest um, 
as long as you have that um, branding in place and you have custom packaging, all that stuff, um, it really is possible. So, um, but one thing to note is that in fashion, you really have to have a specific style or vibe um, for your store. You know, it just can't be a typical like Walmart style um, clothes, you know. You should ultimately have clothes that um, are unique in some way or that, you know, you can't really find in other typical stores and like, you know, the, um, you know, other fashion stores. Um, of course, you can also take ideas from um, the designs that are working and others, but then as long as you don't use their same photos, that should be okay. But um, one thing to note also is that sizing could be an issue, so you really have to be transparent about the size differences um, between, you know, China and, you know, assuming you, you're dropshipping from China and sourcing it from there, and um, the size differences in the States and, you know, other countries as well. So as long as you have a size guide, um, you have a specific size chart in your... Um, your your product page and you know you're transparent about the size differences then um, it could be really uh, lucrative business so before you dive into one of any of these niches you should do some research first on your own niche um, to make sure you know you're getting you know what you're getting into so what are some questions that you could ask yourself um, you know what are some of the target markets pain points you know um, what are they passionate about in particular in that particular niche uh, where do they shop? Where do they watch? Um, you know, any TV shows they enjoy? Any, you know, uh, for instance, celebrities or popular icons they look up to? Um, you know, if any, do they have like a specific way of communication? You know, you know these questions will really be important, um, especially if you're trying to target the different people um, to kind of get your prospects to buy from your store. So, um, you know, the more information you have, the better. Um, there are a lot of resources out there like, you know, Facebook audiences insights and um, you know, looking over different stores from your competitors and stuff like that. So so you can really have a grasp of um, what kind of niche you're getting into and, you know, what they enjoy and, you know, really speak in their language, so to speak. And if you do have a general store, you know, you should, sorry, you should consider niching down based on, you know, what niche you have knowledge in. Or you have experience in or that you're passionate in because it's really going to help you long term in your marketing strategies your um, your branding um, the pictures you post your social media profiles and stuff like that so um, this is just a few things to note um, but yeah this is about it um, make sure you to subscribe if you enjoyed this video and like the video if you liked it and comment below what you think um, or if there are any niches that I missed out on um, yeah that's about it have a good day guys thanks for watching